Welcome to this installment of the SOLIDWORKS course. I want to go over how to make parts in SOLIDWORKS to begin with. And in order to make parts, one has to learn how to make a sketch. Sketches are the basis of just about anything you do in SOLIDWORKS. They generate parts, assemblies, drawings. It all comes back to skills and sketching. So to start off by making a new part, I'll go to the Open button right here click on part and OK. And this is the view where we can begin sketches and making parts. Notice we are given in our left hand history tree over here a front plane, a top plane, and a right plane. Planes are perfectly flat and perfectly infinitely thin. And so we can choose any one of these to sketch on. To make it easiest, if you orient it so that the front plane is generally the front or side of the part and the top plane looks down on the part it will be much easier to work with when you make a drawing so especially if the top plane is looking down on the part from the top you're doing great um, let, let me give you an example of a part that I might want to make here this is a tape holder for instance uh, maybe we can make one of these in SOLIDWORKS as an example so here are the basic tabs um, in SOLIDWORKS. In this environment, you have a Features ribbon, which we won't use for sketches. We'll get into that later. You have a Sketch ribbon, which we will pretty much exclusively use. You have a Surfaces. Surfaces is more advanced, so we will not be doing that in this course. It's a great skill to learn if you're interested in smooth, organic, curvy shapes in SOLIDWORKS. You have an Evaluate tab, which can let you measure a solid, which we'll be getting into how to do solids later in this course, and tell you the mass of your part, where the center of gravity is, etc. And uh, a few other tabs that aren't relevant to this course as well. So if I go on the sketch, the sketch ribbon, and I have my history tree right here, so this gives me all the things that I've done while making the part. I get to choose a plane. Now when I pull up my tape, let's say I want to start with this side of the tape. And uh, learning SOLIDWORKS, the more you do it, the easier it is to learn what you want to sketch first. I'm going to make an outline of this curvature of this side. So going to SOLIDWORKS, I'll choose my front plane and to get the front plane to face the screen like that I just simply click on the front print front plane and press control 8 from there with the front plane highlighted I push the sketch button and we're ready to start the first thing is that I have these nine options to sketch with the first thing is I can click on the line and I can click once and SOLIDWORKS starts making a line. I can click again and it finishes that line and starts another one. If I'm done making lines I just double click and I've got my line there. Or of course I can just keep making lines by moving my mouse and clicking if I desire to. Of course I can highlight any line segment and push delete to get rid of that line. So I can make lines in SOLIDWORKS here I can make rectangles. I can click once, then click in another place, and I've made a rectangle. Uh, I can make a circle here. I can click anywhere, and click anywhere again, and I've made a circle. Three-point arcs. Those are fun ones to work with. They're one of my favorites. I can click in any three points on the screen and it gives me a section of a circle or an arc as we say appropriately. Here I have a straight slot. I do not use this one very often but I can make a line and then I can click again and it makes a slot around that line. It's useful if you need a slot. I don't use it very often. You can also make a polygon. 
good for making bolts, I guess. Finally, these. Whoop. Finally, these guys over here, you have a spline. This is um, not often used in a sketch, but sometimes it's very useful. You can just keep on clicking over and over and over, and it gives you an organic, smooth tangent geometry. Splines are not very useful when you have like 100 points unless you're going for something that you don't need to constrain. You have an ellipse which you start off by making what looks to be a circle and then you can choose how eccentric that ellipse is. These are all very basic sketch tools. And then you have a sketch fillet. A sketch fillet has to be done with existing lines. So if I make two lines and I want to have a smooth curve between these two lines I can grab this fillet and it can make a smooth curve, let's say we give it a radius of half an inch. There it is. So that's a sketch fill that it takes a sharp corner and makes it smooth at uh, any radius you specify. So now that we've got these tools, um, how am I going to make this tape? Well, what I'm going to do is go to this red guy. This is called the origin. And if you notice, I've got my front plane, which I'm sketching on. If I move this front plane at an angle, all you know the little scrolly wheel that the mouse has, you just push straight down on that scrolly wheel and as you move your mouse it changes your view like that. When I look at this at an angle, notice I have my top plane and my right plane and that red origin is where the three planes intersect. And that's very significant on using the origin. Again, I push control eight to get that front plane, what we say normal to me, or on that straight on view. Uh, when we use the origin, it'll be very significant in the next video. So I'm gonna make a horizontal line. This will be the bottom of our tape holder. I'll make a, another line. This is just a, a free form, completely unconstrained, thinking that maybe this will look a little bit like what our tape looks like. Now I'll add a three-point arc where it will go down to hold the tape. I'll add another line and straight down. So this, uh, you know, I, I'll even go a little bit more detailed and give it kind of an edge right there. So if you notice, this tape looks a lot like if I'm looking at just this side straight on. This is kind of what the side view would look like. And that is the goal of most sketches. You pick one side and you make it look exactly like that side view. Why you do that? will start to make sense in the next few videos. I could choose this side to make, and that would be a little bit more rectangular looking without any arcs. I could choose what it would look like from the top and sketch almost a complete rectangle. Uh, there's no right or wrong way. You generally, with a sketch, will choose one side and make it look like that view straight on. In this case I chose this side. Uh, some views will be easier than others. It just takes experience to learn which and this will again start to make sense in the next few videos of what I'm talking about here. Also notice that now that we've made a sketch our history tree has a sketch in it. If we were to make another sketch that sketch would show up below this sketch and so on and so forth. So every feature or sketch you make shows up in this tree. And you can go back and make changes to those as you go along. If I look at this traffic light guy right here, this is the rebuild button. You can also do control B, B as in beta, or you can control Q as in Quebec, and control Q forces everything to rebuild. 
So it's a more thorough rebuild if you think about it that way. And when I rebuild the sketch, SolidWorks goes in and makes everything all over again. When it's rebuilt, you notice it turns gray. This is what we call an inactive sketch. So an inactive sketch is gray just like this. And you cannot edit an inactive sketch. So if you want to make any changes, choose any part of the sketch, right click and choose edit sketch and it brings you back into a place where you can edit that sketch. But of course, I don't know if this measures 100 feet long or an inch long and it's important to be able to make the model the dimensions that I want. So now that we have tools where we can make circles and lines and rectangles, uh, let's in the next video talk about how to give our sketches dimensions. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Before the next video, get familiar with the sketching environment. Try making a few sketches, uh, pick out things that you like, things that you don't like, and we'll resume on how to make these sketches in a controlled dimension in the next video. Thanks for watching.